This video is about how to install Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon into VirtualBox. You may ask, why Linux Mint? Well, its desktop has a similar feel to Windows. So Mint is an easy entry into Linux if you're starting from Windows. It's stable, compatible with most hardware. It's actually the third most popular desktop operating system behind Windows and Mac, and you've got at least 30,000 free apps you can install in Linux Mint and over 60,000 packages, and requires less random access memory than Windows and has a smaller footprint than Windows. Privacy, Linux Mint only does what you tell it to. Its operating system is not set up to collect your personal data, and it's free and open source. Outcomes are what you should be able to do after watching this video. Configure a VirtualBox Virtual Machine, or VM, for Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon install. Install Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon into a VM. Install VirtualBox Guest Editions. And go through the first steps welcome screen after install. Requirements. A host computer with VirtualBox install. An internet connection an additional 4 GB of RAM on your host to run Linux Mint 21, or a minimum of 2 GB. This 4 GB is an additional of what your host operating system requires to run, and an additional 100 GB of storage on a host to run Linux Mint 21, and the minimum there is 20 GB. The next three slides contain additional sources of info, a list of the software used in making this video, and a disclaimer, if you wish, you can stop this video to read the slides. Here I am in Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, and I'm going to create a new virtual machine to install Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon on. Go to Machine, click on New, and so I have to give a name. I'm going to call it Mint 21 Cinnamon. And I've got to have a place for it, so I'm going to pick other because I don't want an Android folder. Right here, we go to Mint, create a new folder, and name it Cinnamon21. And then once I have that, I'm going to highlight it and then click on Select Folder. And click on Next, give it some memory. MIT recommends 2048. I'm going to put in 4096 or 4 gigs. Click Next. I'm going to create a virtual hard disk. I'm going to ignore this 10 gigabyte size because Linux Mint 21 recommends 100 gigabytes and a minimum of 20 gigabytes. So I'm just going to click Create. Just take the default. Click Next. Dynamically allocated. Click Next. And I'm going to just basically put another zero in here and make it the recommended size. And like I said, the minimum is 20 gigabytes. Click Create. So now I've got machine. So now let's go over here and uh, go to some more settings, details, general. And go over here to advanced and give it a bi-directional shared clipboard and bi-directional drag and drop. That way I can copy and paste between a host and a virtual machine. Of course this also makes a virtual machine a little bit less secure, but I'm not going to do dangerous things with this virtual machine, so that would be fine. Click OK. Go to System. Click on Processor. Make it two CPUs. And I'm not going to enable PAE NX because this is a 64-bit machine as opposed to a 32-bit in which you would like to enable that. And because I'm not going to create a nested virtual machine, I'm not going to click on this one either. Click OK. Go to Display. And we'll give as much display memory as I can. And Graphics Controller, leave that as it is. Enable 3D Acceleration, click OK, Storage, and the CD drive is empty, but I'm going to 
go ahead and put the uh, Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon 64-bit ISO in the CD drive. And if you need to find where it is, where you've stored it on your machine, you simply go choose a disk file. Now it shows up here because I've been playing around with to get this video set up. Click here. Click OK. That's it to configuring a virtual machine to run Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon on. In this section of the video, I'm going to start the virtual machine I created and install Mint 21 Cinnamon from an ISO file. Click on it or double click depending on how your host computer is set up. Bring it into the center here and you've got a number of options. I'm going to go with Start Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon 64-bit. Hit Enter. Bounces all around, but I'm going to bring that in to the center again. Okay, so let me bring this back into the center. Let me kind of minimize that one. And yes, yeah, so I'm playing around a little bit too much with this. And up here you see you got Install Linux Mint. Double click that. And uh, on any slow sections, I'm just going to drop away and then come back. But you'll see every screen that we've got. So now it says Welcome. I'm going to choose English. You've got a number of different languages. It looks Similar to an Ubuntu install, but it's got this mint green color. I'm going to click continue. Now we've got keyboard layout. I'm going to go English US. I'm going to leave it with a default. Click continue. And right here where it says install multimedia codecs, I'm going to check this because if I want to use any multimedia, it's going to be available for me. Then click continue. And right here it says Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint. Now this means that it's going to erase the virtual disk and not your host operating system. I'm not going to pick any advanced features or something else. I'm just going to go with the default. Install now. And if you continue to change, it's listed below will be written to the disks. So I'm basically going to click Continue. Where your time zone is, in my case it's Eastern United States. I'm going to click Continue. I'm going to put in name and I'm going to use Mint 21 C I N N, Mint 21 Sin for Cinnamon. And then I'm going to give it a password. Unfortunately, I'm not creating a strong password here, which means that you would use upper and lower case, a number and then a special character like percent, dollar, or something like that. Oops, it says passwords do not match. The install happens. And just thank you for choosing Linux Mint. Talks about browsing the web, of course, Firefox web browser. And you can go through this if you want, listen to music, Spotify, Rhythmbox, watch movies and videos. The only one of these I've actually used is VLC. I haven't had to use the other ones, but you can try them out and see which one you like best. And manage your photos, pics, drawing, GIMP. I've used GIMP and Inkscape. Really like Inkscape because it's a lot simpler than GIMP. But I haven't worked with pics or drawing, but you can try them out. And there's no cost to any of these programs, so that's a great feature. And stay connected. Now here's got Skype. I'm not sure how well this Skype works, but I've had problems with the Linux version of Skype since uh, Microsoft bought them out. And, but you've got WhatsApp and Telegram and Slack. And then you've got your LibreOffice software. LibreOffice Base is a database. You've got Calc, which is like Excel, and Writer, which is like Word, and Impress, which is like PowerPoint, and LibreOffice Draw, which is another drawing program. And then you've got your uh, editor's picks here. The, well, it says browse through 30,000 free applications. From the software manager, I have a feeling there's more than 30,000 free applications there. Steam, Minecraft, Dropbox, Blender, and Blender's another graphical program. Hmm, I haven't tried this version of Minecraft here, but you can see how it compares to the paid version from Microsoft. Of course, this is VirtualBox. Wine here is something that you can download on Linux Mint and you can run Microsoft software inside Wine and some of it works well and some of it works a little buggy. And so you can play around with your desktop, modify it. 
And I'll show you how to modify the background color later on. This is where you install your updates. After this is installed, I'll show you how to do that. If you're curious about something or you're facing a problem, simply ask around. Pretty much it for the introduction here, and we'll let it keep loading. And once it's fully loaded, I'll come back. Now, it's taken me about, well, almost 14 minutes to install Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon version. And it says installation complete, so I'm going to click restart now. And again, it bounces around a little bit. And then it says, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. Well, you don't have to do anything to remove the installation medium here in VirtualBox. Just hit enter and it should restart. And you get an advanced options for Linux Mint or your Linux Mint 21 cinnamon, which is default. And we're just going to take the default here. Hit enter and get it to restart. You'll see it's kind of small right now. We'll fix that when we install guest editions. So I'm going to sign in this time with my password. Okay, so there it is. And it says, Welcome to Linux Mint. This doesn't quite fit on the screen, but first we've got to install guest editions. So I come up here to the top left and where it says devices, I'm going to go down where it states insert guest edition CD image. Click on that. And hopefully it's going to be behind this welcome screen. Nope. It just pops right up. And then I'm going to click run right here. It's going to ask for my password. Enter your password. And so it's going to install guest editions. Okay. Comes down here. VirtualBox guest editions running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. And press return to close this window. So I'm going to re hit return to close that window. And then I'm going to have to restart it. Go here where it says menu. And click on the start button. Just very similar to Windows. And I'm going to click restart. Again it bounces around a bit. And this time when we get it fully restarted, we should see a larger screen. Ask for a password. Whoops, gave it the wrong password. There we go. Drag it out a little bit more here. There we go. And so now we've got Linux Mint installed inside VirtualBox. Now we've got this Welcome to Linux Mint. But before we do that, let's just get rid of this VBox CD. So right click on it. Should say Eject. Click to eject, and away it goes. So that's it for installing VirtualBox Guest Editions. In the next section, I'm going to go through this welcome screen. In this section, I'm going to get Linux Mint updated and actually go through this welcome screen. It says, Welcome to Linux Mint. Welcome to your new operating system. But then I'm going to go click on First Steps and ask for desktop colors. You can choose the desktop color of your folder. I'll just choose violet because it's going to show up next to green. You can pick your own and you'll see that all the folders have changed a different color. Then you've got panel layout. You can make traditional or modern, which basically means with traditional, if you look at the bottom, it's going to get a little bit smaller, but eh, I don't like it. I'm just going to go to modern and it takes a second or two to go around and change it larger. Then we're going to go to System Snapshots, and this is where you do a backup of your system. Click a Launch. It asks you for your password. And up comes the Time Shift tool. And we've got R-Sync here. And we're going to click Next. And estimates the system size. So there we go. We've got this. And we're going to Take a snapshot and make a backup of our hard disk, which is on SDA3. Click Next. Your snapshot levels. I kind of like to recommend two, and I normally would do monthly. But you can do your own. And the reason for two is because the last backup you take could have bugs in it. But the one before should be clean. But I'm going to pick 
weekly, not daily. And I'm just going to make it two. But you can actually check and see how many you want to do. And then I'm going to click Next for Enable the Snapshots. Basically, it's going to do that weekly. Two snapshots a week is the average. It's not going to tell you when you want to see it. And so it's going to exclude all the files from root and home mic, the home directory. And if you want to see what's in these directories, you would, could open up your terminal. Let me open up terminal and you do a sudo du or directory all a for all root. And you can see not much there. Now, same thing you want to do for home mic again home mic and it shows you all the files that are in your home directory at this point in time so they're not going to be backed up we're just going to leave the default settings here let's close this and then we're just going to leave the default settings here and click next and finish and once we've got our settings in then it says time shift is active and we're going to create a backup our first uh, snapshot backup click on create and again, it's going to take several minutes to do this. Now it says, welcome to the update manager. Hmm. So after you install your uh, snapshots. Well, actually, this just popped up because the creating a snapshot took too long. And then your update manager popped up automatically. I'm going to close this for now because I'm going to go through the steps in order that Linux Mint wants you to go through. So now it's taking your first snapshot and there's 87.4 gigabytes left available on your hard drive. And before there was 90 some. And so you can see these snapshots take up quite a bit of uh, hard drive space. It's not necessary to do them if you're only using a virtual machine to play around with, unless you've got something that you really want to back up. I'm going to close time shift. Now, if you want to back up your home directory, I would go to down here at the left, menu, administration, and there's a backup tool. That one I would use to back up my home directory. Time shift would be the one I use to back up my uh, computer. For personal data, I would use the backup tool. And I'm not going to go through how to do that. I'm just going to go through the steps. The next one is driver manager. If you're installing Linux Mint 21 on a hardware machine, you would go ahead and use this. But as far as a virtual machine, if you launch it, you'll see that you really don't need any more additional drivers. I'll just demonstrate that. Authenticate. And it says looking for hardware drivers. And it says your computer does not need any additional drivers. So let's close this. Update manager. Now it's critical that you run this right here. Normally I like to run update manager even before I install VirtualBox guest editions, but I want to go through the Linux Mint steps here. Click launch and it says welcome to the update manager. And you've got security updates, software updates, and system snapshots. Click OK here. I'll give you a list of updates. Do you want to switch to a local mirror? And I'm going to say no, but you can switch to a local mirror, or find a mirror closer to where you're at. For this case here, I'm just going to say no. So it's actually going to pull these updates all the way from England. And it says new version of the update manager is available. So I'm going to click apply the update because it's critical that you get the latest updates done correctly. And authenticate password error. And it's going to give me a new update manager along with all my other updates, I think. So this is the new update manager. Looks the same, but it's critical that you update uh, the update manager. Install updates, it's got them all listed here. And the upgrade will trigger additional changes. We're just going to click OK. And again, this is going to take several minutes to do. So now it's fully installed, finally, and it says a reboot required. System is up to date. Close this, and I'm going to do a reboot, and then I'm going to take a look at your system settings, which is the next part of the first steps. Go back over here, bottom left, and do another restart. So I'm back here to the first steps. We'll scroll down here and system settings, and I'm going to just basically 
show you something about the screens launch and appearance let's go to backgrounds and you can pick any one of these from Linux Mint up here on the left click on Vanessa and you've got all kinds of different backgrounds you can pick whatever you wish however I'm going to just pick a color in order to do that I go over to settings picture aspect no picture and I'm going to use the vertical gradient and the first color I'm going to pick um, uh, green here select and in the second color I'm going to pick a light green select so now I've got a mint green gradient trick here is just to pick no picture and then let's go ahead and close that and then the software manager I'm going to do a launch here and it takes a while for this to uh, load up because it's looking for all the software that you can get and there's Inkscape Stellarium gives you a nice nighttime sky if you want some software and then you've got categories down here and you can pick whichever one you want however one thing I do want to emphasize if you're doing any programming I would not install some of the programming tools with Flatpak. I would just go to the actual place where you get them. Where, like, for example, PyCharm, I would install them from PyCharm as opposed to installing them with Flatpak because the programming Flatpak may have a few bugs in them. Let's close this software manager and the firewall. Again, a password. And here's the firewall. And I'm going to just turn it on. And that's how you turn it on, on and off. I actually went on and off. So now it's on. And you have to keep in mind here that if you leave it on and if you want to do like remote desktop protocol to this machine, make a rule and open up port 3389. So that's pretty much it on the first steps. So now you should have a nice Linux Mint set up according to how you want it. And thank you for watching this video.